Hi, we're the Diva Docs, Elisa O'Keefe Smith, MBA, doctoral candidate, Dr. Tina Scott, Hi. and hey, 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 and our new member of the Diva Docs, and that is representing Diva Docs UK. We're going global, people, <laughs> <laughs> and that is Dr. Emma Cook. And today we are talking about breast cancer, not only breast cancer diagnosis and the impact both physically and psychologically, but we're also talking about the impact of breast implants and the lack of preparation that often occurs in the psychological impact because of that. So uh, what I want to do is turn it over to Dr. Emma, who this is her story. Um, so Dr. Emma, with Regards to diagnosis, uh, how did that come about? Was there family history before then? And how did that impact you? Uh, my grandma had breast cancer, so there was a family history. Uh -huh. um, she had it when she was very young uh -huh. and had a mastectomy, mm -hmm. which, which was how they dealt with it in those mm -hmm. days. Mm -hmm. But um, it came back, obviously, mm -hmm. age related. Mm -hmm. Um, because of the family history, I went to genetic counselling, wow. and that was how I ended mm -hmm. up going for a mammogram mm -hmm. before I was mm -hmm. forty. Mm -hmm. So in my mammogram, um, they found some some tumours, right. and fortunately they were still quite new. Wow! So they they hadn't developed, they hadn't spread, and I had choices to make at that point mm -hmm. because I had I had options. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so yes, yeah, so I consulted with my surgeon, and that's how this story comes wow. out. Wow! Wow! And Dr. Tina, you uh, you're a psychotherapist, mm -hmm. and you deal with the gamut of patients. Uh, what things do you see in patients, or what emotions do you see in patients when they're diagnosed with a condition such as breast cancer? What What do you see? Well, it's definitely a high level of fear. And not only from the psychological aspect um, that I have experienced, I actually was one that actually performed the mammograms on patients mm. Mm. when mm. they were um, mm. diagnosed with cancer, mm. when they were trying to see mm. if it was malignant or benign. And just the lack of not knowing what's going on um, heightened their level of fear. Um, mm. Back then, it just seemed like there was a high level of insensitivity, mm. meaning that the way the message was delivered, yep that you had cancer it was just pretty much cold it was yeah. over the phone mm. Mm. until like different regulations required that there was a different protocol that was mm. followed but there's a high panic high level mm. of anxiety the moment that a patient is called to come back yes mm. there's a high level yeah. of concern mm. and there's a lack of response from the staff because wow. the client or the patient doesn't know what's going on. Yeah. It could be that they had deodorant on underneath their arms and mm. it may have just smeared the image a little bit, but this person is actually sitting home waiting yeah. probably for 30 days mm. to come back in to find out if everything's okay or not. So wow. it's a high level of fear. And like you said, the staff actually don't have much care in, in, in the way they deal mm -hmm. with it. Mm -hmm. Because I had a conversation with one of the secretaries mm -hmm. and her exact terminology to me was, it's only been a month. Right. Now, yes. when you're sat waiting wow. for, for information, a month mm -hmm. is a really long time. Yeah. Yes, so definitely. So to use that phrase, mm -hmm. I found it quite condescending. Yes. And wow. Was, and I mean, I'm quite a strong person, mm -hmm. and I didn't take up any of the counselling mm -hmm. um, because I would have had to ask for it. It wasn't offered mm -hmm. to me. Mm -hmm. And I think it should be offered mandatory. Yes. Yes. Maybe not for myself, but my husband or my family. Right. I think right. they, they were trying to deal with it. And it was, it was harder for them in a way because mm. I was mentally prepared for the diagnosis. Mm -hmm. I, because of my family history, I right. almost expected right. it. Right. 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 Whereas it. So that was a less of a shock for me. Mm -hmm. wow. But yeah, when she said, it's only been a month, mm -hmm. it, you know, if you're going to put, put you in a position where, okay, so I'm just a piece of paper in your eyes. Mm. There's no personal touch yep. to that. Yeah, It wow. seems like it needs to be a higher level of training and sensitivity, which mm -hmm. I know has taken Definitely. place now. Mm -hmm. with so many people getting involved with breast cancer but when it was first really right. coming to the forefront not saying that it was ever in the back but more people were encountering it and yeah. it was hitting so many families mm. all at once but the staff just like you said 30 mm. days that's all you waited 30 days what's the big deal but there's a big psychological impact because you're worrying you're not eating you're not doing the activities wow. that you normally would do you're in a high level of depression and even if they take out 
um, tissue and they see that it's um, benign, mm -hmm. there's always that fear that it may come back. Yeah, I mean, I think I dealt with it slightly differently mm -hmm. because, mm -hmm. like you say, most people, it, most people have that fear which does stop them eating and they change right. their habits. Mm -hmm. I kind of did the opposite. Mm -hmm. I ended up doing more fitness mm. and looking more at my food because right. I knew that that would help me get through the op, which was right. imminent. So right. whatever operation I decided to take, mm -hmm. I knew that if I mm -hmm. had a higher level of cardiac fitness, it would get me through that better. Right. Right. But that was something that I did rather mm -hmm. than something that was right. directed to me by any any surgeons or any nursing staff. Right. So I think I'm an unusual case. It's not mm. not standard really, right. Right. but it definitely made a difference. Mm. And you also get like a higher level of um, education and self-knowledge of what you need to do yeah. the average person do not know what to do when yes. they're delivered that message or even when they actually for myself to be in mm. the field and i had to get a mammogram mm. i didn't want to go because i didn't know how i would respond mm. and, and i have mm. girlfriends that suffer with breast cancer and like yeah. did you get your mammogram i'm like I'm not worried about that right now. <laughs> so literally, they can yeah. call me every day because I didn't want to be in that same situation right. that yeah. I saw so many. Mm -hmm. So I was actually running from it. So when I actually got into the room, I'm like, oh my God, yeah. I'm having a high level of fear because if they tell me something I don't mm -hmm. want to hear, right. how am I going to respond? Yeah. Because yeah. you see people that get treatment and they rapidly get better. And then you also see people that get treatment and they rapidly get worse. Yes. And then you try to figure out which way should I go? Yeah. Should I just let it go or should I do mm -hmm. something about it? And of course you want to make sure you get proper care, but your yeah. knowledge of what to do is much more greater than most people because mm -hmm. they yeah. have no clue. Exactly. Yeah. And and your profession, yeah. you, you know all about nutrition. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Emma, for any of you who want to know, has a site called Medicinal Kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> and so she knows all about uh, what mm -hmm. to put in her body. Yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so it was, so, quite, useful. It was mm -hmm. quite useful mm -hmm. to have that. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously from previous experiences that I've had in my life, that mm -hmm. meant that I was prepared. Mm -hmm. But that's that's a small minority. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. um, and I want to get to the uh, impact, the emotional impact and lack of preparation both by the doctors and a lot of patients with regards to uh, the breast implants because even if people survive they're often psychologically damaged uh, through uh, what they go through in the aftermath with with breast implants I know I've had uh, different friends where they've been diagnosed and bang they're in for surgery yeah. and then they have to wait before they can have the skin expanders yeah. to put the implants in. And I've had friends who've gone through three or four botched surgeries yeah. and they feel like Frankenstein. Yeah, That's yeah, what yeah. they've said to yeah. me. Um, their whole femininity has been taken yeah. away. Um, and it, it's just it's not permanent reminders as well yes. of what you've been through. Yes. So, so what was your and I know you were able to prepare um, because of not only your your medical knowledge but you prepared for a couple of months in advance and had the skin yeah. expanders what what exactly happened when I talked to my surgeon uh-huh I, I mentally prepared myself for the diagnosis of being positive mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I mentally prepared myself for having to have an operation but I didn't prepare myself for, for the question what size do you want to be? Right. Because right. in my head, all I was bothered about was getting the tissue out right. and getting the tumours out. Mm -hmm. So that was something I didn't consider. Mm -hmm. When he gave me my options, right. what I could have done, obviously he selected the best one for my, right. like my job and my lifestyle. Right. Right. So he was a very good surgeon. Right. Right. But I, I kind of had this image in my head that I would have implants put in that then were, would be expanded at a later date. So right. I was trying to prepare myself for waking up with no breasts. Right. Because in my head, my, my understanding was that they would then inflate them. With Is that what happens? Later on. Not exactly. I did have some shape because okay. they put some saline in at okay. the time, but I didn't okay. expect that. Wow. So I actually came around from the mm -hmm. surgery and thought I actually thought we hadn't done it. <laughs> <laughs> because, because you know when you kind of go, oh my I've god, I've still, still got boobs. Uh -huh. Wow! And, and I thought, uh -huh. oh, they've not done it. Why haven't they right. done it? Right. So I had a panic about that. Wow. <laughs> but wow. yeah, so then I had a course of mm -hmm. um, two or three different expansions. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think the aftermath for me hit after my last op my last operation in mm -hmm. September mm -hmm. because that was that was where I was. I wasn't going to get any de any better. There was no. Wow change going to happen mm -hmm. from there mm -hmm. that was my lot mm -hmm. um, and I think it's it's been more of an issue for me mm -hmm. at that point because there's no help I had my last operation 
that's it, you're on your own. There's no psychological help with that. There's no get you know help it with a family or your partner even well, you know yeah. and, and I think the, the sex side of it you know you, women women may have lost their nipples with this exactly so it is a, it is a big a big deal oh and there's nothing definitely they just leave you on your own with that well my my girlfriend I know she told me that after she got used to uh, having breast implants or the thought that they're going to do surgery to have the breast implants she was almost feeling excited that oh, I'm going to have young yeah. perky <laughs> perky breasts for the rest of my life yeah, yeah. they're not going to sag and and the reality was that they weren't um, put in properly yeah. and then uh, she was dealing with a sick mother and had to do lifting and so mm. she had one that ruptured mm. and she's had multiple surgeries and just been left scarred um, just the lack of preparation with regards to the doctors letting her know what was going on mm. um, and the lack of literature out there, yeah. the lack of information out there for patients. Tina, what have you experienced with your patients with regards to the psychological impact of uh, breast implants and, you know, either great implants or botched implants? Well, you know, it's a difference when we mm -hmm. choose to get implants because mm -hmm. we have so many people that are cosmetic reason they just want right. to enhance themselves right. or... Mm -hmm. takes them away but when you're forced to actually have that type of procedure mm -hmm. it makes you feel like you're you're not um sexy yeah right um, when it comes to mm -hmm. intimacy it's yeah. like i really don't want to take my shirt off turn right. my lights off right. right um mainly because you don't want the scars to be seen right. by someone else mm -hmm. so it's very emotional mm -hmm. and they don't feel mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. no there, there's definitely they're not, they're not normal mm -hmm. well, and you know constantly that they're mm -hmm. normal right. mm -hmm. and you know it's, it's kind of they pa patients want to get your opinion like do they look natural so as crazy <laughs> as it sounds they're right. like so what do you think yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay Ooh. well because they are seeking approval right do yeah. these look right before i actually share these with my mate because right. for me they don't feel the same yeah. yeah they really don't look the same mm -hmm. my nipples may be going this way or right. like so yeah. many different things so they feel inadequate right. and, and with society the way it is mm -hmm. today mm -hmm. puts a lot of pressure on different body parts and how right. they're enhanced and how it makes you look mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and there is there is an expectation for everybody to be perfect right mm -hmm. right yeah. you know even if they look normal mm -hmm. to somebody else you know they're not right mm -hmm. yeah so you know you're not in yes. that realm of perfection that mm -hmm. we're all seeking exactly yeah, it, is, it is a very difficult situation yeah. Ex exactly and um i just want to to uh finish off the thought about uh what you went through i know that after you've gone through everything you actually did a photo shoot yeah. in england and you were there there were a lot of people that were very angry yeah so what, what, what yeah, happened negative. to that? What happened? Well, I decided to do a couple of photo shoots to try and present a positive image for women who've been through this. Right. So I did one that was quite feminine and um, and I did one that was sporty and sort of fitness related mm -hmm. in the gym. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and for the most part, people were very positive. Right. But I actually had quite quite a few people making very negative comments wow. about mm -hmm. them. And, you know, I was doing it for the attention and obviously I just felt like, you know, it, 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 for me, it was it was an awful situation, mm. and I was I was warned it might happen mm -hmm. because I, I did it through the Cancer Research UK. Right. But I actually got people want, wish, wishing me to die. Wow. People actually sent me private crazy. messages. They took their time out of their day to send me messages saying, "I hope you die." And quite a few expletives. Wow! <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's that's just yeah, crazy. Yeah. Um, and I just wanted to ask. Uh, your final thoughts with regards to breast breast surgery and also breast Im implants and how we as a population uh, can do better. What, well, what are your final I thoughts? think um, as an individual too, mm -hmm. not allow a society to dictate how you feel about yourself. Mm -hmm, Unfortunately, mm -hmm. um, many are experiencing cancer and it's right. definitely making alterations to your body, but. I think we have to be stronger within versus yeah. allowing mm -hmm. the things from the outside to dictate how we feel about ourselves. So wow. I think that's a start. And I definitely think counseling is very necessary because without that, you'll find yourself spiraling out of control, being highly depressed, and the yeah. list can go on. So I think a great support system also. Wow. Is yeah. Learning to love yourself. Yeah, wow. regardless. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Final thoughts? Yeah. 
No, I think that's not good. Yeah. 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 And my final thoughts are uh, just when you were going, if you were faced with a diagnosis, don't think it's the worst thing in the world. Prepare and get all the information you can. Seek, seek, seek information. Go to people who've had it done. Yeah. Don't, don't hide and don't. Uh, stay away from people reach out to people who've dealt with it uh, reach out to people who've had hard things happen because they will tell you the way around it so uh, just want to say thank you thank you all and <laughs> hey we're the diva docs check us out www.divadocs.org at diva underscore docs <laughs> <laughs>